Gang, we got a low ticket alert in Cleveland and Columbus, so if you want to catch the show, you better make a move, baby. Yeah, gang, there's a handful of tickets left at each show, and then obviously the second show added at the Vogel Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey, August 11th. <laughs> That's more than halfway sold out. Ooh. Get those tickets. Let's sell it out, gang. We'll see you out there. Peace. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's new favorite <laughs> podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. It's that little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out if they grow up to be classy mm-hmm. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. <sighs> I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're out back here at Tootie's in the new edition. She's up on the roof with a new set of binoculars. Okay. Trying to get a look at that new widower that moved into the house next door, taking a little peek at him. Great. Okay. My co-host <laughs> is coming at you from right next to me. He is the CEO of Are You Garbage? He's an international businessman, and he's my best pal in the whole wide world, and I love him. Give it up for KJ, Kevin James Ryan. (laughs) What's swinging a miss on the Tootie joke? What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, view, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. As you know, those numbers are... True to roof. Cooking. Cooking. Then, obviously, the greatest website of all time, www.patreon.com, gang. Check it out. It's a party over there. Yes, it is. And having a nice quick shout-out to our producer extraordinaire, the Magic Man. Makes us all look good. Works the ones, the twos, the threes, and the fours. Give it up for T-Bone McScruff. It's Toby McMullen, everybody. Hey, buddy. What up, dudes? What up, t <laughs> Beautiful day out here. We got a legend in the edition, yeah, man. Yeah, he ain't a, lying, a man. A pro, baby. Woo-wee. Gang, the long hair ain't lying. We couldn't be more excited to have our incredibly, and I mean incredibly special guest, here with us today for the first time. He is a very funny, very successful stand-up comedian, actor, and television personality. Mm-hmm. And you may have seen him in, but not limited to. Here we go. We got Sullivan and Son. We got the detour. Better Call Saul, The Last OG, Space Force, The mm-hmm. Opening Act, Only Murders in the Building, Hell of a Week with Charlemagne the God, the 2022 sleeper hit Confess Fletch with John Hamm, yes. we got American Dad, Star Search, Premium Blend, The Late Show with David Letterman, Death Comedy Jam, Last Comic Standing, Guy's a worker. Conan, uh-huh. Last Call, This Week at the Comedy Cellar, uh-huh. This Is Not Happening, The Tonight Show. The View, Wendy Williams, Colbert, Seth Meyers, Kelly Clarkson, (laughs) Colbert, WTF, The Joe Rogan Experience. He has multiple stand-up specials, including 2017's Father Figure, 2019's No One Loves You, 2021's Imperfect Messenger, and he just hosted the 2023 Correspondence Dinner. He is on tour right now, and for the last several years, he has been your favorite correspondent mm-hmm. on The Daily Show. But the big question about his mind today, is he garbage? I'll tell you this. The guy wears a suit like nobody's <laughs> business. <laughs> Give it up for Roy Wood Jr., everybody. Yeah. Let's go. What is the budget for <laughs> for Red Bull and cocaine? <laughs> On this program. It's true to roof, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you motherfuckers didn't take a breath. <laughs> I'm amazed. No stumbles, uh-huh. no fumbles, just straight professionalism into that microphone. This show's brought to you by the Cineola Cartel. <laughs> Shout out to the boys down there. Happy to be here, motherfuckers. Thank you for having me, though. I am. Ah, man. I We've am. been looking forward uh, to this, yeah. man. This is good. This is good. Happy you know, to have you. You know it's going to be a good podcast when there's a beer cooler <laughs> as decoration. <laughs> that works. You want to pop, I'll get you a pop. That's the main beer cooler no. where you get beer from for that's the decoration beer. Uh-huh. And they're ice cold, baby. <laughs> you want to pop, we'll get you a pop, <laughs> Roy. has got decoration beer. I, I got to take a picture of that shit. Send it to me. <laughs> Um, Before we get into your backstory, I just had a question for you. You just hosted Mm -hmm. the correspondent dinner. Yeah. What was the grub like? What was the food like? It was it was okay, but you gotta remember, I'm I have to perform. Sure. And they bring you. It's the work. You know what sucks about the correspondence dinner is that (laughs) it's the only comedy show where you're just sitting on display for the audience. That sucks. For two hours. Mm -hmm. You there's there's thirty minutes. And then there's like an hour of food, and then there's the actual proper program ah, the worst. that people see on television. What yeah. you see on TV, we're already 90 minutes into the shit. Yeah, you should be in a green room. Yeah. You should be no, somewhere. Sit Killing. up there on display mm-hmm. like Eat meatballs the fucking and shit. medieval days, <laughs> yeah. you fucking joke boy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sit there, 
and make small talk with the <laughs> Madam First Lady. <laughs> Y'all ain't got shit in common. Yeah. Oh, you use Uber Eats? What's going on? You're trying, to fucking, trying to find common ground? Yeah. It's it's literally- You guys watching beef? Huh? What's the deal? Imagine small talk with a person whose life you couldn't imagine. Yeah. And I'm sure she had the same thought on her side. What the fuck am I going to talk to this black dude from Alabama about for two fucking hours? You don't take a helicopter to the grocery store? Yeah. Uh, no, but so great. that part of it is, is weird. Right. It's just just people looking at you and going, Look. <laughs> like you're about, Just, like you're a fighter pilot. Go, oh, you're gonna get him. Yeah, yeah, literally, like you. That's really what it is. It's like you're taxiing out for war. <laughs> Like Tom Cruise, where he gives the go sign to the dude on the carrier deck. <laughs> With a prime rib and a crab cake in front of you. Before the catapult launches yeah. you off to the podium. And they're waving like, poor bastard ain't coming back. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's it's uh, it's, it's, it's it's a psychotic thing, but I, sure. would, I would do it again. Yeah. Really? I would do it again. Well, it's yeah. juggling dynamite. It's, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when you really think as a stand-up comedian... How many performances as a stand-up still truly matter or still get some level of eyeballs on a regular basis? And that's one of them. Sure. Or on the level of, like, say, what a Tonight Show credit Used was. Used sure. For 100%. sure. Pre-Leno. I'm talking mm -hmm. Carson. Sure. Like you'd, you'd rip on Leno. Even Leno and Letterman, you'd rip in the 90s. And a motherfucker would be off to the side of the mm -hmm. stage and go, here's your career. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where this still has that level of gravity. That, yeah. That's why I give, I, I, you got to give props to Chris Rock for doing a live, live special. Yeah, like, sure. I went back and dug in the crates and was just looking at some of the people who did it before. And nobody really remembers this and it's not talked about, but fucking Sinbad. <laughs> he did it? Sinbad. I love Sinbad. Hang on, <laughs> I'm going to blow your shit wide open. Sinbad did a live prime time comedy special squeaky clean mm -hmm. with commercial breaks what damn <laughs> now a few words from our sponsors kick it to trident how the fuck that's nuts do you time your jokes right to the commercial break yeah because you gotta have someone someone's gotta be like five four yeah. three and you're, you're performing like... during the commercial break bitch and when we come back from commercial you've got to merge perfectly back with the tv audience at home damn so you essentially have on air and off air material that has to be timed perfectly for what the f that's nuts He's I one met of the him best. one time. That's juggling dynamite. Yeah. 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 He hosted my Gotham Comedy Live in like 2009 <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And that motherfucker killed <laughs> yeah, dude. He was, dude. He was hosting. He was doing, doing, he was doing shit during the commercial breaks. He everything. is one of the greatest. He is on my Mount Rushmore. I, I don't even know how we got to this place, but that dude is just fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. There's man. the famous story about him. I don't know where it was. It was Montreal or something Sox. like that. Everybody bombed. And he had went and got a pair of socks that day. And didn't really have anything prepared and went out there and just murdered about buying socks. I think that's a Norm McDonald story. Yeah. They were talking about it in the green room. It was Norm was like 19 and they were talking about <laughs> socks. And then he goes out and I was like, hey, just went out and fucking talked about socks and like murdered. I Got thought, like a television deal and everything. I thought you were going to tell the snowplow story. Oh, I don't know that. that. The, the, he's doing a show at a casino during a snowstorm. <laughs> Does an hour. As he's getting ready to rap, like going into his last bit. A single couple walks in and shuffles into their seat. And he goes, where the fuck have y'all been? Mm -hmm. And they go, we were stuck behind a snowplow on the, you know, in the hills. We just couldn't, couldn't go around a snowplow. So we're just now getting here. He goes, all right, cool. Does his closer. Then tells the audience, that's it for you all. You're welcome to leave if you want. But I'm going to do another hour for <laughs> these two people. Man, that's pro shit. Man. And he did another goddamn different hour, hour yeah. a whole different fucking That's hour. Yeah, of course, no one left. Uh huh. He does another hour as a killed. treat to yeah. two people who were stuck behind a snowplow. Man, who that's how you become Sinbad by doing pro. that shit. Who the fuck you know with an extra hour in their back pocket? <laughs> I don't have an extra ten minutes. What are we talking about here, bro? <laughs> Unreal. That's fucking man. awesome, man. Unreal. So you know you have to do things in stand up that. I think still halfway keep the craft relevant. And, sure. You know, yeah, that does for sure. Yeah, that's one of those things it's, where it's like even if you don't watch it live, like I didn't watch it live, it. but I go watch everybody finds out about the comic yeah. set. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So it's still it's still it's still relevant. So Damn. you know, yeah, I'd do it again. And even if I bomb, I can still say I, I, I did okay the first. I got him the first time. <laughs> you should have seen me the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the ch- seating was different this time. I was start making start making excuses. I saw you right before you did it. You were you were running spots. You were running running in the West Village. You remember it was like a couple weeks ago yeah. when I saw you. You had your 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 notes in your hand and you were walking down. I was like, "Hey, bro, what's going on?" I was like, "I was trying to get this stuff ready to go." <laughs> yeah, I yeah, we had a couple writers and they're like, "Oh, we'll come with." No, I know whether or not it's gonna work. Sure, I'll yeah, send yeah, you yeah. audio uh, of what sucks. That was the part that was frustrating. Is like the news kept changing. Sure. So for all this preparation you're doing. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry about that. The Don Lemon just got fired. So, <laughs> yeah, God damn, scratch that page of jokes. So drop the spy balloon joke to make room <laughs> yeah. for Don Lemon. Okay, yeah. cool. Oh yeah, Tucker Carlson <laughs> got fired. So the the the, the Mike Pence and, and the Nikki Haley stuff. Yeah, don't. Do, oh, that. keep it fresh. Sorry, the Fox Dominion lawsuit just yeah. got settled. Oh, that was a wacky couple of weeks. Everything was dropping. Oh man. So you know, most of what half of that set was. I mean, we cooked fresh that week. Damn. Because the news broke that week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt so like an idiot. Choice. I feel like an idiot after I saw you because you were like, ah, oh, I'm just trying to get these jokes ready. And you were like very focused. And I was like, oh, you're going to do great. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you got moxie, kid. <laughs> you're, like you're going out down the car. I was like, what yeah. the fuck is wrong with so, you? So <laughs> to answer your question, I couldn't taste the food because <laughs> I was so fucking nervous. Uh, yeah, but it looked good. Yeah. I, like I I ate the salad, the, mm-hmm. the salad part. I, was, I must have something so <laughs> yeah. I don't collapse. <laughs> But it looked good. Yes. Oh man, it's funny. Um, give us the backstory on Roy Wood Jr. Where'd you grow up? Give us, give us a bro, scoop. There's not much to say, bro. I grew up in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Well, we moved there when I was in the third grade. We moved there from Memphis. Okay. And so, just I was, I was like a basic, like I wasn't a class clown. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like I chilled. Regular kid. Yeah, yeah, I was a regular kid. I didn't really start wild until college. Like I played baseball, and well, I rode the bench. In high school. High school? Um, What'd your mom and dad do? Uh, my pops was a, was a journalist, uh, radio journalist, but okay. he covered like black issues or whatever, but like black conflict, I should say. So he was embedded in pretty much any black conflict you can name from the 50s to LA riots. Damn. So wait till South African riots, the Rhodesian Zimbabwe Civil War. He was, on Gee, the he was like, like in the shit. Oh, Jesus. getting shot at all that. Yeah. The whole wop. Holy Vietnam fuck. with, you know, predominantly black platoons. He would go mm-hmm. over. He was he was like volunteer. A, no shit. Send me where black people are dealing with bullshit. No and shit. I will take a tape recorder. Damn. You want a gun? Nope. Really? Just give me a tape recorder. That's and we'll go wild. cover those stories. Come home, cover the civil rights movement. You know, pretty much that was that was his thing. You know, my dad was, you know, real big on black righteousness. My mom, you know, she marched, you know, a lot, but you know, she settled on, you know, higher education. She's been in higher education almost forty years now. Okay. So like that's her lane. Like her lane is just educating and bettering people. My pops died when I was sixteen, so I started working a lot more. And that's kind of where like you start getting that hustle mentality because you don't want to be a burden on your parents. Uh-huh. Like your mom, like my mom, my pops dies, we lose half the income in the house. Sure. Mm-hmm. So my mom is struggling just to keep the house while I get ready to graduate from high school. So I'm working every side job you can name. Um, what was that like, landscaping or like groceries? Yeah. Or what was the first what, job? What, what, what the were first, they? The first with a pay stub was Baskin Robbins. Ooh, Ooh. Shout out to it. Thirty one flavors. Uh-huh. Western Hills Mall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Baskin Robbins in the mall, dude. I had a mall job uh-huh. at fifteen, and the girls who used to work at Simply Six or Three Five Seven, <laughs> I would give them extra ice cream. Of like, course. That was, that was my way of flirting. Yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't give it on the top because my manager was looking. So I would like pat the inside <laughs> of the cone. Is that a three pound cone? Yeah. It's <laughs> dense. <laughs> the most dense ice cream. That's cone. for you, baby. <laughs> you know, baby. Two hands, baby. A couple 20 stuffed in a sugar cone. Bro, I I just I just worked. I worked. I I raked leaves i'd mm-hmm. flip my nintendo tapes i would sell that shit i would sweep i would sweep parking lots 
at um at gas stations really? in the hood because the guys that worked in the hood, the guys who worked at the gas station in the hood, they have to go out and sweep the parking lot like once or twice a week or whatever. And they hated doing it because you're constantly going in and Back out and out forth. Because yeah. of the customers. So I go to the guy one day, and this is, I, was in, I got sent to summer school in the ninth grade for algebra. And the seat I had in the classroom, I could just fucking see the gas station. And I just fucking watched this guy every fucking day. Just going back and forth. And just every day. And he would come out around like one o'clock. And so one day I go to him, I go, hey, man, I know you can't pay me, but just give me $10 worth of candy. Write it off as shoplifting. Jesus. And I'll sweep this shit for you every day. And so he goes, you got a deal, motherfucker. <laughs> so after summer school, I would go over there. I would sweep the parking lot. Who's go, doing fucking write-off <laughs> schemes at fucking ninth grade? How'd you're you failing algebra, but you're fucking yeah, I was gonna doing white-collar crime. How'd you do an algebra that summer? <laughs> bro, bro, I'd walk in. It's like, uh, you remember that scene in Casino where they're showing the guy going in the count room, and he sure. just walks out with money? Yeah. Yeah. Bag. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's skimming the skim, and uh, they're skimming the skim, skim, and nobody <laughs> Sees anything You're in over the there with a pack of now and later. It's like, ah, <laughs> all right, boys. Yeah. All these kids are in line to pay for their candy and shit, and I'm just walking out with a fucking 48 count snicker. <laughs> <laughs> we, on the flip side, boys. <laughs> we had everything Clark bars, Snickers bars, we had Skittles, the whole nine yards. Whatever Nobody said wanted. nothing. And then there was Jimmy two times. I stay here. I'm going to get the Laffy Taffy's. Get the Laffy Taffy's. Ah, uh, shout out to a Laffy Taffy. Uh, so woo. I take $10 worth of candy, flip it at school for 20 so, Man, what the fuck? So now that's twenty raw profit in my pocket for a job. Dude, he's talking. Hey, he's Frank talking Lucas? right off shortage of raw profit. Yet he's in summer school. No overhead <laughs> other than other than the thirty minutes it takes to sweep. Sure. To sweep the shit up. So, Pay off a couple of cops and keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> Detective Jenkins plays ball. Yeah. So that was. God damn. That was that was that was my childhood, man. Was just figuring out ways to make a little bit of money. I was we grew up. It was a bad neighborhood. The apartment I, house. What were you guys in? We were, we were in a house. We're in a house on the west side of Birmingham, a neighborhood called West End. And so we're at South Park Road and essentially Pearson Avenue. This would have been late and, '80s, early '90s. Yeah, we're talking? we moved to Birmingham '84. Okay. So this is the rise of crack, the beginning of white flight. I had one white neighbor. There was, at the time, there was still a white biker gang. They were like the last holdouts of- In the neighborhood? Yeah. Yikes. And they were just, God bless them, because they, they tried to hold down sure, the fort. Yeah. They're a that white- That was their Alamo. That literally. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. And they just, like, they would ride their bikes through the hood and shit. And then, like, this is the rise, uh, you know, late 80s is the rise of- Speakers, subwoofers. Sure. Mm -hmm. So dudes is coming down the block. Blah, blah, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And they will pull up next to the, like the gas station was next to the biker club, clubhouse or whatever. So it's just a battle of just. <laughs> blah, blah. Rob Bass cranking. <laughs> Legit. Like what? Well, Rob Bass. At that point, we was Luke. It was Miami Bass. It was a lot of Luke. There was a lot of two live crew that made his way Uncle Luke. to Birmingham. So we grew up in a pretty. There was there was there was there was a lot of shit going on in the mm -hmm. neighborhood. But okay. my mom my mom did a good job. You know she kept me busy. A lot of after school, a lot of lot of boys club, a lot of going to the library. Like anytime I was in the hood, I was always on the way somewhere. And so then the thing that really turned the tide, she bought me a basketball goal when I was in middle school for I the would, house. Yeah, because I would go up to Powderly Park and shoot and. I never had problems. Mm -hmm. I saw problems, but I never had problems. Like people never really bothered me per se. But my mom goes, "Now nah, fuck it, I don't want you close to the house." So she buys a gold plexiglass backboard. Damn. Nice, Breaking adjustable. Rim. Uh, no, no, no. I, that would have been. Yeah. Now that would have been crazy. Those were. That awesome. was the height of technology. Oh, in the nineties. Forget Get about the it. Get the broomstick or whatever. Woo! So because we had. The only we only we had the only house with a driveway that was in the shade during the day, so you could play shaded basketball. And we were also wanted a few houses in the neighborhood. The way it was configured with a two car garage, you could play almost half court if you play off into the grass. So gotcha. Bit. So half court in the shade in the middle of the day in the yeah. summer, 
popular spot, I would imagine. The crib became Powderly Park. Yeah. And so because of who my father was, and my father was a known name on the radio, I had a brother at the time who was a, who was a primetime anchor for the NBC affiliate. Jeez, no kidding. Our family name within the city of Birmingham, at least in the black community, is sure. pretty solid. So it's a lot of people who I know, I know, you, I know you run and do a lot of dangerous shit, but when they were at our house, mm-hmm. it was There's all respect. Rules, yeah. That's pretty cool. And they respected my mom because my mom taught half of them or taught their older brothers. Sure. So there was a bad element. It's a bad neighborhood, but that house, there was never anything. Our a little bit of a safe never got sanctuary. Into. Our house never got broken into. No graffiti, no bullshit, no drama. Like, not a fucking thing. So that when I got to high school, and I started going to summer school, because I didn't go to my zone high school. So when you go to summer school in those days in Birmingham, you go to your zone school for summer school, which means I was around a bunch of kids, in theory, that I shouldn't know. Okay. But I know all of y'all because all of y'all come to the house. Mm -hmm. Playing basketball. Yeah. So it gave me the freedom to move through a bad neighborhood with a degree of diplomatic immunity. Sure. That's pretty good. Because if you fuck with me, you can't come shoot. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of all right, man. That's a cool story. So that that's just you know you can call it luck. You can I'm glad whoever the fuck planted them trees did back in the thirties. <laughs> <laughs> so they grow. Let's talk about base, baby. If you're anything like me, when you travel, you want to be prepared as possible for any situation. That's the Kippy rule, baby. Base luggage is here to help you bring as many changes of emergency underwear as you want. As a guy who sharts himself, let me tell you, an extra pair of drawers ain't too shabby. Created by on-the-go actress Shay Mitchell, base luggage is made for functionality by a woman who knows a thing or two about travel, baby. They sent us the duffel bag. It's fantastic. It's got a little area for your shoes. You be bop and scat all over the place. I'm changing shoes two, three times a day just because I can. The bags truly have it all. 360-degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, a built-in weight indicator, washable bags for dirty clothes, and tons of interior pockets for all essentials. In case you've all... In case... You're already worried about messing up your brand new bag. Base was created to look even better with miles. So go ahead, chuck it in the overhead bin. Get a little rough with it, you know what I mean? Right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your purchase off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash garbage. Go to base travel, B-E-I-S travel.com slash garbage for 15% off your first purchase. That's base travel, B-E-I-S travel.com slash garbage. Do it. Ladder, 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 baby. In life, you can put off a lot of things, doctor's appointments, going to the DMV, doing the laundry, but one thing you can't put off is getting life insurance, baby. Don't jam up the people when you're gone. One last final screw job, as I like to say. Time to cross uh, things off your to-do list, and why don't you start with life insurance through Ladder? It's 100% digital. No doctors, no needles, no paperwork. When you apply for three million in coverage or less, all you need is a phone or a laptop to apply. You find out if you're instantly approved and you get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. It's easy peasy. I went on, tick, 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 figured it all out, got approved. Now Hans ain't going to get screwed when I croak. You know what I mean? There's no hidden fees. It's no wonder why they made Forbes best life insurance list for 2021. So go to ladderlife.com slash garbage today to see if you're instantly approved. That's ladderlife, L-A-D-D-E-R, life.com slash garbage, ladderlife.com slash garbage. Do it, gang. Check it out. Take care of it. Don't screw over your family. Set them up real nice. But yeah, but that was it, man. I fucking went to college. I started doing stand-up in college. I stole some credit cards in college. I got caught. <laughs> now we're talking. Hold on a second. I didn't think you stopped. I didn't think you stopped your fucking scams after I stole algebra. Some credit yeah. cards. Yeah. I, how that? What? How could you not? What's the? What's the statute of limitations not? on credit card fraud? What? Uh, what this was the was scam? It wasn't a scam. It was simple. Let's say it was ninety-two for legal purposes. <laughs> no, it was ninety-eight. <laughs> it was oh, the fifties. Yeah, what, what do you, you mean? This shit can be googled. <laughs> I don't know if you can be Google. You have to go down to the courthouse and like request a freedom of information. Sure. <laughs> the All right. Patriot Act on Roy Wood. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. So I was a mail sorter in the post office, and back in those days, credit cards came hot. There was no calling and credit cards oh, activating. Yeah. There was like this idea of calling a number and hello, it's me. Turn my credit card on, please. That didn't happen. They were ready to go. They probably started because of you. Gas in the tank. That's called the Roy Wood rule right yeah. there. <laughs> well, every credit so, card in Alabama keeps getting stolen. The Roy Wood Jr. law. <laughs> so 
so I take some cards. We go down to a department store. We buy some shit. The girl knew. The girl knew what was up. Sure. So she undercharges us in order to leave more space on the card, so we can buy more shit. Damn. To which, after fact, I'm going. Well, why the fuck did you do that when I could have just stolen Sold the another shit. motherfucking yeah. card? Didn't need you to be courteous and leave more space on the card. And that's how we got caught because you can't buy Tommy Hill figure for eight dollars. Sure. Ah. So right. if you're working, like let's say, yes. let's say you're working, and this is right at the turn of the technology and department store loss prevention, where your manager or security could be watching your register and get a same time image of what you're ringing up mm -hmm. to make sure you're not fucking around and skipping. Like, skipping you know, they, they would skip scan. scan. Yeah, yeah, they would skip scan. I worked at so, Macy's, I know. Okay, so, yeah, they, yeah, so yeah. you know. So they're making sure that you're not skip scanning, but in the process of checking her for skip scanning, they're going, why the fuck did she just charge him $8 for, for a Tommy girl? Pair of jeans, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not the right called. price. Yeah. Fuck. So that's what happened. So I get probation. Well, at the time, I thought I was going to I was told I was going to prison. So I'm like, well, my lawyer said I'm going to prison. I always wanted to do comedy like that Sinbad fella I saw in primetime. <laughs> Fuck it. Here's a chance to try it before my life completely mm -hmm. implodes. Started doing comedy, got probation, been doing comedy ever since. There you go. Kid's a worker. Graduated. Got my degree in journalism, dean's list the rest of the way. Really? My mom and I, it's wild because, you know, going back to the correspondence dinner thing, like, you know, you got two parents that's on, that fought for every possible chance for you to be successful as a black person and blah, 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 blah. And then you get ground up in the system. So when I get probation, I get back in school, my mom's like, good, now graduate, and I'm going, yeah, I think I need to go and uh, do some stand-up comedy. Yeah, I'm sure she was thrilled. I'm not gonna be doing no internships or any of this mm -hmm. extracurricular journalism shit. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm gonna just graduate because I think it's part of my probation term. The good grades is one of my terms of probation. So, mm -hmm. I got you the Tommy Hill figure for Christmas, Mom. Yeah, <laughs> what's the problem here? <laughs> Put on your Tommy jacket, Joyce. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my mom and I. Those were awesome, by the way. Yeah, Tommy jackets are hot. <laughs> yeah. We don't, we don't talk. We talk literally once a month for a year. And it's a five minute conversation to assure that the other person is alive. Okay. So, she's not with comedy. I need the whole. Thing. No, no, you're no, good. No, no, we're good. So I start riding the bus to do open mics and shit. Because I'm in Tallahassee. I'm in Florida a and And so in, in the South, in the 90s, open mic was not a weekly thing in most markets. Atlanta had a weekly open mic. Tampa Bay had an open mic. Shout out to Coconuts and St. Pete Beach. Yeah. I think so, it's still there. Yeah, yeah, still standing. So... I could go there weekly, but if you wanted to do more, you had to bounce around. And so I would go wherever I could. I would Google Just comedy clubs. Stage, yeah. And so I would go to Birmingham once a month to do open mic. And that was where I stood. That was the first club I did was Birmingham. And so just on a whim, like eight, nine months into the shit, I go to Birmingham to do the open mic. I'm sleeping at the bus station because I don't want my mom to know Jesus. what the fuck I'm doing. So I would get to the bus station, go out to Hoover, do the show, go back to the bus station, and sleep until the bus. One of my mom's fucking students saw me, goes back to the campus, and snitches on me. So that's how my mom found out mm. what was going on. She's furious, and I'm like, I'm not gonna stop. I don't know what the fuck to tell you, but my grades are solid, and the deal we made was- Keep the grades good. If my grades are good, you can't say shit about anything else I do in life. Mm -hmm. And you made that deal. And you agreed to that. And I'm upholding my end of the bar. And it wasn't shit my mom could say. She Damn. on the phone. Dean's list. Week later. <laughs> Dropped out of college. <laughs> <laughs> 2000, 2001 Ford Focus for Christmas as a gift no from my mom. Shit. Really? Look at that. Come so on. I can stop sleeping in the bus station. She still did not agree with it. She never talked what down. A great lady. She never talked down on what I did, but 
she definitely always wanted me to be safe. She would put my safety above any and everything. Good mother. I had to catch the payments, but she made the down payment because she knew. And, and what the car did, the car opened up the whole motherfucking eastern seaboard. Sure. So I can still get back to class. No I, bus schedule, bro, no this, no that. I put my classes Tuesday through Tuesday through Thursday. Thursday night, I'm Out. fucking gone, bro. I'm gone for five days just sleeping on couches, sleeping in the car now, but at but at like Flying J truck stops and all that. So it's wild to go from that moment to the correspondence. Of course. Dinner, and I'm able to give my mom a shout out because she's in the fucking audience. That's Whoa. fucking. Whoa. Damn. Wow. Which is just a, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, that's amazing. That, yeah. For the course, that's fucking dinner. crazy, yeah, dude. Fucking nuts, Do you know how many dude. people don't make it that sleep at bus stops? <laughs> Every other person but you. <laughs> Every single guy who's ever slept at a bus, there's like three that made it. I like how she but, slipped the payments on you. Yeah. You got the down. Yeah. Here, here, here's a liability for the next three years. But that crime shit is weird, man, because what's wild is that, and I don't know if it's like this in every city, but like in Tallahassee, Tallahassee is the type of city, at least it was at that time, where it doesn't matter what dirt you do, you meet everyone that's doing dirt. Sure. Because if I'm if I'm if I'm taking credit cards out of the, the post office and I'm fucking buying jeans and clothes, then I start taking this shit and selling it. Well, now you're selling stolen goods to people who. Yeah, you're not. To, yeah, you're not selling goods, stolen goods to people like your mom. You're selling goods to ding, people ding, that are ding, in the in the market for stolen shit. Yeah, boys and yeah. pimps. And, so when you get arrested, they the first thing the police try to do is pin every fucking crime that has ever been committed in the fucking city in, since the history of crime mm -hmm. on you, or prove your connection to other okay. people. to other people, and so. Before the and and so before they even like took me in the process and they got they got me in interrogation, and they're like, "All right, well, we got you on the jeans, but do you know of these other crimes?" And they're like telling me there's like check kiting and fucking cocaine and fucking this, this prostitute. Apparently, there's like a sex house in Tallahassee, mm -hmm. and they're just showing me picture after picture after picture of people. And I fucking know all Every of them. single person. <laughs> Tony! <laughs> there was a murder last week, and the guy was wearing CK1. What do you know about it? Literally. <laughs> literally shit like that. And they're going, do you know anything? We have an investigation about this. Do you know this guy? And I'm, like, trying to keep my eyebrows still. Because <laughs> in my head, I'm like, that motherfucker be killing? <laughs> I thought he just was the weed man. It's like, just stay still, eyebrow. Stay still. <laughs> So that's when you realize, <laughs> like, be but when you walk back through the scenarios, right? And it's like, fuck, I was at that motherfucker's house last week. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. If they pull a kick, though, and I'm in the house. Mm. You're wrapped up with a bad I mean, news. It's group possession. Just if you're in the room with dope, it's your dope. Especially in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I if I'm imagine. in the room with you and there's a gun, like, I, it's like stuff that I knew you were kind of a shifty person because I'm being shifty, but you're seven. Like, keep in mind, all this is 18. I'm 19 years old. You're not doing character value judgments on people. Yeah, you're rooted. You're rooted in good morals, and you're like, I've, I assume these people are. They're I'm here to sell a gene. Yeah, I am not robbing people. Uh -huh. No one's going to therapy over this because of a credit card that you sure. like. That's my thought process. Sure. Uh -huh. Like it's a victimless crime. Like like there isn't a direct trauma being inflicted. Like that's yeah. my brain. But I'm dealing with people that were like really fucking deep off and wild, off the reservation, yeah. Wild shit, bro. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I really got lucky. Yeah, yeah. not for sure. Walking really on the edge. got fucking lucky. So you know, I live a life that could have gone the other way very easily. Right down to the judge who decided to give me probation. Who wasn't even the regular fucking judge that does the sentencing? Hmm. Damn. Could have got the regular motherfucking been done. So, you know, I look at my life. My get whole the life, old school here in trouble. Bro, my whole life is just a fucking straight up second chance. So all That's I great, do is man. try to be decent to motherfuckers and try and elevate people. I had the probation show for Comedy Central where I essentially played my probation officer. Mm hmm you know, did the pilot didn't go or whatever, but like that was a show that was based on what the system would look like if it was built with people who actually give a fuck about the people. Because there's way more people on papers than in prison. 
Yeah. We talk about all this prison reform shit. Half the people that's caught up in the revolving door is because they're on probation. Or and parole a, or from something. You yeah. had a fuck-ass PO or you had a fuck-ass lawyer or a fuck-ass judge. You just had one person in your process that didn't give a fuck about you and you're in jail or you go back to jail. So, like, I know my life could have been that. So, you know, with what I've been given, I try to be decent, try to help motherfuckers. Fantastic. And try to be good. That. Wholesome. I try not to be garbage. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. I mean. Uh, huh. Okay. Speaking of which. Yeah. Um, oh, did you guys do any vacations when you were a kid? Where would you go? What was a family vacay like? Not many. I'm the ninth of 11 kids. What? Holy shit. How did we miss that? I'm my mom's only. So there's that. Okay. So Pop said to fucking make his Nick Cannon round. <laughs> <laughs> when he wasn't at war, yeah, yeah. embedded in telling the black story. You got story, three Vietnamese brothers and sisters? Yeah. He was fucking. <laughs> man, was, man, we got to fix the civil rights. Hey, baby, come meet me after the protest. <laughs> What you doing after the protest, young lady? Come on over here. Okay. Um, were you took, a, were you close with all of them, or not even close, but a relationship the two, with them? The two younger ones were closest because we were the closest in age. The rest of them, we're we're cool, but it's mm -hmm. just everybody's all doing their thing. When you're ten years old with a thirty year old brother, what the fuck are y'all? <laughs> yeah, that's well, what my family is. Yeah, we're yeah. great now because we're men and sure. we're grown. But at that age, it wasn't the same. But the the few road trips I do remember. Most of them were when I still lived in Memphis and my my mom and I were commuting to Birmingham because my dad had taken that job in Birmingham but didn't want us to move with him yet until, you know, make sure it's stable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we would take road trips up to Chicago where my father is from and we would listen to eight tracks. My dad had a CB radio. Nice. nice. And, like, that was my first, like, Prank call, sure. talking shit to the truckers, jerky boy. That was yeah. the best as a kid, shit. man. Yeah, yeah, and them truckers, they get mad. Yeah, we did it. We did it once on the Jersey Turnpike, and the guy was like, "I see you in the red Subaru, and we're gonna kick the shit out of you." <laughs> <laughs> Freaking <Yeah>. out, man. <laughs> Those CB radios were all right. Yeah, that was like OG social media, man. Like that was that. I remember that the most is just being in the car. What kind of car were they whipping around in? My pops had a Lincoln Mark Seven. Okay, he was he collected Lincolns. Well, not really? collected, but like he'd flip them every yeah. two years gotcha. for the next Lincoln, or he go Mark Eight, he go Continental. Mm -hmm. um, we nice. had the old box uh, Lincoln Town car, the yeah. joint the, the, with the corners. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. ones that are, were the livery cabs for a while yeah. here in New York. Yeah, yeah. Every once yeah. in a while, you get a you call an Uber if you're in the boroughs, you get one of them, yeah. and that back seat. It's about 15 feet long. <laughs> Dude, yeah. you're in there just chilling in the back of that thing. Stretch out. A little out. faint smell of smoke in there. Yeah, but we would, you know, we would go on road trips here and there. But, but nothing major. Nothing, nothing major. Like, my dad did me in a way that it's kind of similar. And this is what I'm trying to avoid with my son. Like, my dad, when he would get speaking engaged, so... You know, when he kind of retired from, like, war reporting and all of that and was just doing news commentary mm -hmm. on the radio, mm -hmm. he'd get booked for speaking engagements sure. and shit like that. No different than, say, like a Tavis Smiley or, I don't want to say Al Sharpton, but the, mean, the yeah, same yeah. gigs. The, sure. They work the same circuit. He's gotcha. not Sharpton in career arc. But So if my dad got booked somewhere fun, he would take me with him. That's cool. And then pass me off to some younger journalist or person or whoever's there. Like he got we took a private flight Damn. to Epcot. My pops got flown private to Epcot. To Disney. And it was just some woman. I to this day I can't remember her name, but just some lady. Her job all day was just Watch you. Take my boy to the rides, bitch. And freaking, <laughs> And like that's sure. what we did. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember ninety three um, I I rode I flew with my father to Houston for the National Association of Black Journalists. He was getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. Damn, there you go. And I just remember some random person just take my boy across the street to the Astrodome so he could see the, <laughs> see some shit. And I just went and did a tour of the Astrodome. That's awesome. And it, I don't even think it was some official tour. I just think it's my pops knowing people. Yeah. In the city. Let them walk around type thing. My, you know, my dad helped and hired so many journalists that are still indebted to him that he literally could just pull up in town, fuck a babysitter. 
Hey, you, didn't I give you a job in 70? Watch my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck a baby, sir. Bro, when, uh. when I used to come to Birmingham in the summer, now this is the most ridiculous shit. The school year in Memphis ended three weeks before the school year ended in Birmingham. But when the school year in Memphis ended, like for two years, my mom would send me to Birmingham to be with my father. Okay. And so that's where I would go for a month. And then I would go back over to Mississippi to be with her family. For the most part, I traveled in the summer. I never, I didn't, I don't remember spending many summers in Memphis. Gotcha. So my mom would send me to Birmingham with my pops and it's just me and him, but he didn't trust to leave. I was a latchkey kid in Memphis, but my pops didn't trust to leave me at the house alone Mm -hmm. because of the neighborhood. You got to come with me to work. So I would get up. And I'm in the first grade, and I would get up at 5 o'clock in the fucking morning Jesus. with my dad. I'm in the first grade, and I'm up at 5 a.m. And we would go to Hardee's. We would get a biscuit. Like, I remember that, like, food and travel are, like, the memories. Hardee's was all right. The car is where I spent the most time with my dad. Hmm. And so we would go to the radio station, and he would do morning news, and I would sit on the floor and just watch him read copy for, you know, two hours. 7.30 hits. This woman, Francine Palmer, rest in peace. She would come and pick me up, and he goes, you're going to be with Francine today. And I go, okay. And then Francine decided, well, I don't want to watch him all day. Why don't I just drop him off at a school? <laughs> I don't think you can do that. She talked to my dad, and my dad was like, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> He can can, learn some shit. You can't do that. (laughs) Oh, man, you got double dipped in school? Second, mind you, I'm coming out of first grade. He's in wood shop or something. What the (laughs) fuck? Yes, literally, I would just get- He's at the high school? He just would take take me to Kingston Elementary School on the north side. The fuck? And just drop me off in a teacher's, and I would just be in that class (laughs) for the last three Three weeks. weeks. So so the first three weeks of visiting my dad, (laughs) I'm just in fucking school all day. school again. And a different dude. Imagine starting a new school three with three weeks left in school. Nobody wants to fucking play with you. You're not from. Yeah, nobody wants to fuck. And you've been up since fucking five in the morning. (laughs) Everybody thought you were a cop, bro. Every every fucking summer for like it was two summers straight. I got sent to fucking school for daycare. That's fucking wild, that's crazy. Man. Now I learned some shit though. <laughs> <laughs> Francine don't like kids. That's <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch this motherfucker all day. Uh, speaking of cars, what are you whipping around in now? I do. I sold my car when I moved to New York in 2015. I had a Kia Sorento. I've only had two cars as an adult. Really? Uh, the Focus like, being one of them. I had the Focus that oh, my shit. mom bought. I rode that for 300,000 miles. Jesus. And then the Kia, when I turned it in. Dude, 300,000 miles on, on a, a Ford, Ford nonetheless. Yeah, that's, nuts. Yeah. that's all right. In Shout out to years. Detroit, huh? In four years. Four years, four years you put 300,000 miles I on it? I told you when she bought me Jesus. that car, it opened up the whole fucking country, bro. I'd drive as far as Sioux Falls. Holy shit. Jesus. Drive down to Miami. I took it as far west as El Paso. I fucking, yo. I fucking rode that car. That car, if I could go back and buy it today, I would. Sure, just to fuck, just if to I had a place, it. just yeah. to fucking have it. Yeah. Man. yeah. That's a long drive after you bomb, dude. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Driving back from El Paso. <laughs> man, fuck coconuts. Yes. <laughs> you were like, good damn. Yeah. You just got nothing but 18 hours. I had one like that in Detroit. I had a long drive bomb. In Detroit one time, I went to do open mic in Detroit on a Monday. I called a club and like, oh, open mic Monday. Come on up here. I show up. I show up for sign up. And there's like like two or three people in line. I, it sign up's at five. You come back at eight for open mic. Which mm-hmm. I still think it's such a stupid procedure that yeah, clubs do. Yeah. So I come back at eight. And everybody, it's all men. And they're all fucking hoodied. And just fucking in the zone and motherfuckers in the corner, like having little freestyle ciphers and shit. Oh. And I go back up to the fucking box office. I go, <laughs> I go, I'm here for open mic. Where is the open mic? She goes, this open mic, baby, you in the right place? And I'm wearing a suit. This is back when I used to perform in suits. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Open mic in suits? <laughs> that's that's so garbage. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, 
I respect it. I'm t- but keep in mind, I started when I was 19. I was way skinnier than sure. what I am. So when I was 19, I looked 14. Mm-hmm. So the suit added a little bit of, of course. pay attention to me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm 22. I'm, I'm in a suit at this fucking comedy club. I go, yes, I'm here for open mic. She goes, baby, it's open mic rap night. Oh, my God. I go, y'all didn't put that on the website. <laughs> she goes, we don't have to. Everybody knows. <laughs> no, go, not everybody. <laughs> I'm not from it. Who the fuck does rap night at a comedy club? And I'm like, oh, y'all just trying to keep the lights on. Mm-hmm. This is at Coco. Shout out to Coco's. It's, it's gone now as a venue. But I've driven. I'm here. I'm doing my three minutes. Oh, you're a bigger. She goes, do you still want to go up? I go, yeah. I'm go- I know I'm going to bomb. But I drove, so I'm, I just put, put, she goes, she goes, well, how about we just put you on last, baby? I go, yeah, that's a good idea. Jesus And Christ. it's 29 straight, it's 29 people in a row. Motherfucker, I'll kill, and that motherfucker, yeah, you don't know about the D and the 313 and the, the murder, murder. <laughs> and then I just get out there, yeah, it's a book buyback, it's crazy. I'm, I'm talking about airplane food? <laughs> Well, it, it was all college shit to a room full of people that could have given a yeah. fuck about college. RAs are a pain in the ass, huh, guys? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> that's like the type of material. Anyone in a frat? Doing. What's happening? Man. Damn. Okay. Why, why is book right. buyback? That is a robbery. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Yeah. Cool. Let's get into some, uh, some let's, cues Let's do some here. cues here. Okay. Um, any of your family or friends ever been on the TV show Catfish? Negative. Okay. Were you a Crystal I, Light family growing up? Crystal Lake, Friday the 13th? No, Crystal Light. Oh, Crystal Light? No, no, we were Kool-Aid. Crystal Light was like white people, Coke Zero. Because like, 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 the commercial, there's no, black, there, there's no black people in the Crystal Light commercials <laughs> back in the day. It's not, I can't, I, can't, I, don't, remember, I don't remember It just, it, 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 it had the same vibe as a Lululemon commercial. Like, whatever. <laughs> Like it just it just didn't register as a black thing. Like yeah. we take city water and flavor it, and mm-hmm. then add sugar. <laughs> I want this crystal light bullshit. <laughs> uh-huh. No, no, no. Okay. okay. Uh, your TSA pre check. Yes. Take your shoes clear. off on a plane. If I'm in first class and it's a long flight. Okay. okay. Like if it's a red eye. Gotcha. Red eye and I'm laying down. There's something about taking your shoes off that just good. helps you go to sleep. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. of course. You never, like. The release of pressure, baby. Yeah, because if I keep my shoes on, I feel like I'm back to sleeping in the focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flashbacks, and I'll never go back to that. Mm-hmm. Will you put the seat back on an airplane? Let's say you're not in first class. First class, I assume, No, yeah. I never recline. Really? I never recline. Gentlemen. It's not Whoa. out of courtesy, though. Why? I like how he said that. Not because I'm a nice guy. No, it's window seat, no recline, because if you don't recline, they can't wake you up to put your seat back oh, up. So strategic. you get 15, so you can start sleeping earlier at longer, border. Yeah. At, exactly. So you get to sleep more on taxi and landing. Gotcha. What's your airline you fly? You have one that you're true to? Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty regular on Delta. Yeah. Not out to it. We're a couple Delta of Delta boys. men ourselves. Yeah. I, I was a Continental, I was a, well, Continental before they merged with United guy out of the South. Mm-hmm. I think I think most comedians. I, I think it just boils down to if you live in a city where this airline where the has hub is, yeah, yeah. Like like my buddy Steve Byrne, that's been my dog for years. Mm-hmm. He is an American Airlines Fuck loyalist, that. but he's from he's right, Pittsburgh. He's right there, yeah. And Pittsburgh is where AA they, oh, they got a lot of routes out of mm-hmm. Pittsburgh right. to makes Chicago. Sense. So yeah, so it makes sense. Whatever's but, best. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm a I'm a Delta guy. Okay. Will you, will you bring food on the plane? Like, will you order a burger mm. in the terminal and take it on the plane? I am very conscious of scents. I don't want to be the Good. guy with the, like, there's a picture of some, this couple that had a crab boil. On <laughs> yeah, that's one. insane. It's a beautiful picture if you did. They had the middle seat with the crab and mm-hmm. the corn and shit. It's a gorgeous fucking photograph. Um, Not everybody belongs on a plane. Yeah, that's, no, That shouldn't happen. I took a Chicago-style Pizza on the plane. It's a Giordano's. He took a he took a deep dish on a, on a Giordano's. Nonetheless, <laughs> I had a I had a three hour layover at O'Hare, and if you Google, there's a there's a Giordano's pretty close to O'Hare that you can get in and out of. You left to get pizza and Absolutely. came back. You put a pizza through an X ray machine. I called it. I called the order in as we were taxiing <laughs> to the gate. 
<laughs> I called your Donalds, like just a straight, just greedy bitch that I am. Why didn't you just yes. eat it then? No, I because what if they, something happens with the flight? I just want to get back to the safety of the plane. Okay. And it's like a 10 minute debate on whether or not the sauce on the top counts as a liquid that I'm bringing in. <laughs> like they legit had a conversation about the, the well, I don't know if this is liquid, son. I gotta talk to my supervisor. So I brought that I brought that on a Chicago back to LA flight. I fucking Jesus. All right. Did you eat any on the flight? Fuck yeah. That's the whole no, point of that okay. question, right? Okay. Yeah. I I, I wasn't I, sure. I didn't know what you were doing. I really. ate a slice at the gate. Okay. And then when we got to the fucking plane, yeah. Crushed it. Okay. Had to give the TSA guy a couple of slices, too. Yeah. <laughs> like for him to play ball. Um, if you go if you go and get something uh, on your debit card, uh, like a CVS or anything like that, will you will you get cash back? Negative. I don't I don't use my debit card for transactions because it's a hack fest and yeah. fucking smart. Yeah, credit card, so my shit's protected. What are you what are you working with credit card wise? Amex, Capital One? I like Amex for the points. Shout out nice. to it, baby. Tie that to the Delta yeah. account. Yeah. Fucking double yeah. Enough double the dipping over there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course. Uh okay. Not bad. Uh, growing up or now, do you keep batteries in the refrigerator? Negative. My dad did. I never do it. My father used to keep 35 mil film in the fridge, too. That was a thing uh, as well, to keep film from degrading before you use it. That huh. makes sense. That The batteries doesn't... I don't know why that people think that works, but film, to me, that makes, that sense. makes sense. I'll yeah. tell you a cheap trick. A dark, cold, cool though, spot. If you need to squeeze a little extra juice oh, out of a dead battery, <laughs> piping hot water, like water hot enough for tea uh-huh put the dead batteries in the water let them sit five six minutes really piping hot battery out of the water it's got extra juice in there really it sounds yeah. like it would explode yeah it's possible <laughs> <laughs> we have i am missing a couple of fingers the it's never failed me okay <laughs> listen man, family feuds on i'm not missing it yeah, yeah. This remote work kids, yeah, yeah. Little, yeah. Kids don't do it's that a, yeah like if i'm in a hotel room in the back i go over to the coffee maker just run a Picture of call water. Down to the what? Desk. Call down to the front desk. They'll bring you a new remote. I don't have time for this. <laughs> You're boiling water. What do you time. mean? Listen, I watch, Man. I watch MacGyver and Bear Grylls. All right. If the uh, housekeeper came yeah. in and you had batteries and boiling hot water, she'd have some questions. Yeah, it looks like you're yeah. making meth or something. <laughs> what the fucking breaking bad What's over this here? What's guy doing? God damn. Someone told me a story one time of a comedian that was in the room jacking off when housekeeper came in. <laughs> And he went to apologize. And went out, and she ran out the room. Of course. And he ran out the room Chaser. after. Her. I'm sorry. Trying to apologize oh. and locked himself out. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That is such a horrible feeling oh, when you hear that one. door lock. Like, oh, once you go, oh, I'm fucked. Fucking fuck. Oh, it's like that old police academy where they, was it <laughs> Captain Bowser, where they put all the fucked up shampoo in his head? Yeah. And it was in his eye. He couldn't see, and then he fucking walked out to the middle of the. You know the fucking. <laughs> that was the first one, police. We had, I think the tape is back there. We, yeah, we have it on we set. We took it off of uh, HBO when I was a kid. Um, hmm. Send any Venmo requests. Requests? No. But I'll pay people through. Like, I'll do spots around New York. I get paid in Venmo. Sure, of course. And so then, in turn, if I'm working with someone who needs to be paid in Venmo. You'll just you'll keep it in there and send it to yeah, them. Yeah, I just never take. You never take it out. I never take it out. Will you take the customer receipt at a restaurant? If you sign the receipt, will you take the customer copy with you? No. And can we stop with the receipt shit? I'm, sure. I'm right there with you. What are we doing? Uh, toast. The tablets. Great. I, boop, boop, I, do I? Like, it's on my credit card thing and then my credit card does a better job of sorting sure like 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 amex does like that end of the year yeah, this it is what groups, you spend on yeah. housing rental cars whatever it whatever groups yeah. all your shit so that's enough for me no i've never been asked to show a receipt i mean in 20 years oh, wait no i take that back i take the customer receipt and i throw it away smart because so i don't want you to fucking rewrite another i tip. got jammed yeah. up 500 bucks they took out and cleared out my bank account really yeah when i was i was in college I left it there. They took it, $500 tip, Wrote cleared me out. Tip. And then the, the the business closed that next day. So it was just like the waiter, one last hurrah from the waiter. Fucking I went back to then. fucking scream at him, and the, the balls were boarded up. I put the cash symbol when I write in it. Oh, yes. yeah, nice cash and big. Symbol. Nice paranoia. Nice I like big. it, Roy. Yeah. And then I blacken out the area to the left mm -hmm. of the cash symbol so you're not adding, you're not remixing this Real shit. Real big. Yeah, and then I fucking circle it, and then I get it notarized. No more than this. <laughs> 
I go see a judge on Monday. <laughs> To right, a magistrate. Note. Me and the waiter go to the magistrate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving him eight, eight bucks. Nothing more, mm. nothing less. Can you open uh, a bottle with a lighter? No, I don't smoke. So okay. I don't know how to do that. But they've taught me that wham the bottle on the edge of a counter trick. Okay. Yeah, that fucks up the counter, though. Who taught it's you that? Not my counter. Know, some, <laughs> some alcoholic in a <laughs> rush. <laughs> An alcoholic in a rush. <laughs> Some booze bag that had to get to work real quick. Yeah, because whenever you're like, oh, let me find a bottle. No, bro, I got away. And then, <laughs> Everybody has their own trick, yeah. Like, what the fuck? And they wear it as a badge of honor to show you how they can do it. Yeah. Um, huh. Are you peeing in the shower? You peeing in the shower? Absolutely. Brush yeah, your absolutely. teeth in the shower? No. Gentlemen. No. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about hibachi restaurants? Mm, no. No. Korean barbecue, I like. Yeah. yeah. The classier hibachi. The best. I feel like it's like DIY hibachi. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Get your I, hands dirty a little bit. Will you shower in the morning or at night? What's the routine? Night. Shower at night? Yeah. Really? I'm night. I, 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 early on, I dated a woman in college who believed in getting in the bed clean. clean. Okay. To preserve the cleanliness of the bed. I'm with you. Makes sense. I mean, it just kind of made sense to me. Sure. Will you dance at a wedding? No. Really? No, I don't really know how to dance. I mean, okay. I can. We like, do I might. I might two step or something goofy. Something easy. Yeah. Electric slide, yeah. Macarena. Yeah, but if you ask me if I'm out there just running the dance floor <laughs> all night, <laughs> freestyling like, a little bit. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. <laughs> Have you ever saved a Crown Royal bag? Oh, yeah. Do you have one oh, currently in your apartment? Yeah, no, no. I haven't drank crown, crown in a while. Okay. Yeah. Once you elevate, you can stop drinking bagged liquor. What's the go-to <laughs> drink for you now? Did you say bag liquor? Yeah. <laughs> I thought he said bad liquor. Bag liquor is no. a great term. No, because no. really the good, the good shit, it's not that Crown Royal isn't good shit. It's just there's, 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 better. A, there's better shit. Sure. Yeah. Once you get into better shit, the the packaging is way more simple and sure. just subtle. Clean. Yeah. What are you What are you knocking around with today? If you were going out after this for a couple of drinks, and what are do you, you doing? do you keep? Do you have a little bar at the house where you'll have a drink when you come home after yeah, work? Yeah, I'm still trying to build out the little. I just got a place a couple of like last fall, so I'm still trying to figure out all of that. But I got the ice cube moles. Really? I got the circle and okay. the fucking, square and the square. It's a pro so, move. Like I got, I got the right cubes because I'm a Manhattan guy. I'm an yeah, old fashioned guy. Yeah, hit me like, with the manis. That's my thing. So, pretty much any Top Chef brown liquor. I like that Japanese Suntory. I do Johnny Suntory um, time. I still like. Some you got Johnny bullet. at the house. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what Johnny, color? Johnny, are Johnny Black. I didn't okay. go blue. You didn't go crazy. Yeah, okay. Fucking. Where does uh, where's Roy Wood uh, grocery shopping? Where do you go? I, there's a couple of like D'Agostino's. D'Agostino's is legit. Classy. Yeah. Yeah, Whole Foods man. For chicken salad. And there's there's a couple of things in Whole Foods that I like, but you go to Whole Foods specifically just for the chicken salad? They got to me, they they got a Sonoma chicken salad, bitch. <laughs> it's fucking it's chicken, it's fucking pecans, grapes, celery. And then if you want to get sexy, go home, shave up some apples, add sure. some apples to like that Like a bitch. Waldorf salad. Almost. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a classic. And what answer. are you putting that on? D -d cracker. I just you do it with get a, crackers. I do chicken salad with crackers. Sometimes I do a croissant from Zabar's. Whoa. Like, Whoa. Get, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, Kennedy. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then you go you go get one of them Jewish bakeries and get some of that good soft ass bread. <laughs> So it's like I'm on like an errand, and it takes me back to my days in high school where I would go Burger King for the burger, McDonald's for the fries, Chick Fil A for the milkshake. Whoa! No way! All on the same day? Yeah, like there's there was there used to be in Homewood there used to be a spot where that you just could blew knock my out mind. all three. Like if you if you come down Green Springs in Birmingham in the '90s, Jesus. there was a McDonald's and a Burger King within a block of each other, and then the Chick Fil A was in enough distance for you to consume. The burger and fry on the way to Chick Fil A to wash it down to get the trifecta. So I now I don't know if that's classy or trashy, but it's fucking genius. So now I don't like any of the crackers at, at Whole Foods because I just I like this the, guy's real hoity-toity. Yeah, now, and I'm I like here the for weird it. basic ass crackers. I don't want your fucking knockoff wheat thin or your mm -hmm. knockoff townhouse. I want a nice buttery 
fucking basic bitch cracker. You're a Ritz uh, man. Yeah, Ritz. Uh, ta- Ritz well, it. I'm a club. I'm Keebler Club. Ooh. Townhouse. Ritz if you townhouse got nothing is all else. Right. Yeah. Ritz is the bottom tier yeah, of it's that. It's like the vodka. If you got, right, I'll do vodka if, if you don't have any dark. I, I'll try them. Okay. That sounds like a credit card. I'm Keebler Club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get in the lounge. I have a lounge access. <laughs> So, they let me in the tree. <laughs> so you gotta Just go. Just the elves in there. So you gotta go regular grocery store for your crackers. It's the Food Emporium, you know, the Walgreens, sure. the Dagostinos. Get your crackers from there. Get your get your chicken salad from Whole Foods. Get the bread from Zay Bars. You're very Man. calculated. I like it. I like it. Um, great. If it, you're gonna a good, enjoy, a you good should process. enjoy food. You should not compromise at any point. Will I don't feel like going to no. Go. Hey, you're and preaching to the choir. Get all that good ass bread and then get you a fucking Tupperware and keep that shit, stretch it out for a fucking week and a half. Mm-hmm. Do you have a, 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 a regiment like where you go to the grocery store every Saturday, every Sunday, or anything like that? Or you just nah. kind of. Just kind of let it flow. No, I just kind of let it flow. And usually when I buy groceries, it's just for three or four days because at some point I'm on the road and sure. something I bought yeah, is going to go bad. Mm-hmm. I've tried those meal mail. You. Delivery? I've tried them both. I've tried the one where they mail you the shit raw and you cook it. And then I've tried the ones where you just reheat what they cooked. In. It's like New York chef just made this yesterday mm-hmm. for you. And I'm like, yeah. I would recommend trying factor. Meals. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, factor meals are fantastic. one's a sponsor. <laughs> so we're cutting that. Okay. <laughs> Can you just do us a favor? Let look at know. the camera and say you love factor. <laughs> I like factor. <laughs> In fact, as a matter of fact, that is my favorite meal prep plan and service. Mine just got Thank delivered you, today. <laughs> um, when you eat at the house, if if you make dinner, do you do do you order in a lot? You get you get. Yeah, I that's something I'm guilty of, which I'm trying to be better about. Okay, and I'm gonna have to because you know I'm co-parenting now. So when my son is over, I don't want to just keep ordering right. food. Like, yeah, if you're by yourself, your son's not there. Will you eat? As, will you sit at your table, the kitchen table, and eat, or will you yeah. sit in front of the TV? No, I eat at a table. Really? I, do you plate I, it? No, I, 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 or do you eat out of the container it comes in? Usually out the container just because mm-hmm. of the road comic in me. Sure, sure, sure. Because if I'm if I was in a hotel, he's this eating is it a, with an iron or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like, got the batteries in the coffee pot. But if it's something like say like like when I get, I can't even think of the name of the place. Cafe Forensic. When I get chicken parm. Woo! Now you're cafe, talking my language, there, Roy. Cafe Forensic. I like to like for that to be out. Get that out the container mm-hmm. so okay. you can really enjoy and. Spread your plate, set your bread to whatever. Um, no, I don't eat. I don't eat in the bedroom. I might snack on the couch, but like a full meal, nah. Okay. Unless I'm eating a pizza and watching a movie with somebody. Sure. You know? But no, I, I like to, I like to eat at a table, man. Uh, will you watch anything while you while you're eating? Will you put what's on the iPad? Watch a show? When oh you're yeah, at the anything table? goes. Okay. Anything goes Fair while game. I'm eating. But just I, at a table, bro. I'll eat during a Zoom call, and I know they <laughs> try to act like this is some sort of faux pas, and you shouldn't do it. And I'm like, this is me. It is, yeah, this is what so you're buying, gang. Either you want to work with me or you <laughs> sure. don't. I want to eat. If we came over to your house right now and you offered Which us, we're gonna do some water. What would you, what, how would we get, the, what would the water be coming in? Would it be a bottle? Would it be from the sink? Uh, Brita it, out the cup. Brita out filter of the cup. Filter tap. Okay. Filter tap Brita pitcher. Okay. Okay. And, uh, in the fridge? Yeah, cold? it's in the fridge. I'm a cold water guy. I don't know. How's the that. filter on that? Uh, I don't know. It's charcoal. It's quicker than the one I had before. I had this Pro Pure or some shit that mm-hmm. was too nice. And it was like a chalk or a granite filter. And it literally would take nine hours for <laughs> to one get a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How often are you changing the filter on the Brita, though? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> you got us tap water is what you got us. You got us tap water in a cold. picture. It's cold. Cold. It's cold. <laughs> that kills half the germs. Okay. Uh, Let me swap out this filter. <laughs> <laughs> Set a reminder. <laughs> Be a floss every day. Not every day, but I floss. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about the rotisserie chicken? I am a fan, mm-hmm. <laughs> only because the rotisserie chicken saved me. You know, sure. Not on the road. Mm-hmm. That's six dollars, bro. Of six bucks, lean. That's two meals. Lean meat too. Shout out to the Roto game. Know. Yeah, yeah. I used to fuck up Boston Market when Ooh. I first moved to New York. Go in there and buy a whole fucking like a grocery store rotisserie, mm-hmm. like Publix down south. 
Publix supermarkets have probably the best rotisserie in the game. Okay. Walmart, I'm putting second. Really? I don't think I've ever had a Walmart. That's a bold statement. In, I in the South though. Okay. In the yeah. South where they give a fuck about flavor and yeah. see like don't just go any Walmart and go, Roy said, come here and fucking <laughs> I'm over in Parsippany, New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Roy don't, sent me. Back to the tires. <laughs> don't do that. That chicken's gonna be trash. Okay. Uh are you a pistachio man? Negative. No mm. pistachio. No, I'm a I got a cashew allergy is extended to um pralines and pistachios are in the same neighborhood. So okay. I just I like when I was like thirty five on a flight, I ate a cashew and just out the blue my throat closed, almost asking him to land the plane. Jesus. So since that day, I'm like, okay. Okay. Fuck all y'all. Sure. I respect Except for Snickers. That's worth death. <laughs> You like an ice cream Snickers? Yeah, I can still Woo! eat peanuts, but cashews, pralines. Legumes. Yeah, gotcha. I don't know the difference. I just Stay fuck away. them all. Yeah, no, it makes like, sense. Like, even now when I eat a Snickers, that first bite is just like a little nibble, <laughs> and we wait to feel if my yeah. mouth becomes warm. Give like, it a couple minutes. Yeah, like, you ever drink bleach water? <laughs> like, no. Okay. What? What's bleach but, like, water? Wait. The, the water would ble- You ever what? accidentally ingested chlorine bleach? No. no. Okay. When you do, your mouth gets really warm. Have, and it's why similar. Have yeah. You? Why? It, You're it doing was, real good here, Roy. Don't yeah. blow it now. Thought You're it drinking was, bleach. I, you guys know. You guys know when you're hanging out drinking <laughs> chemicals. You guys know that, right? <laughs> Couple of guys hanging is, out. I'm more of a spick and span man, to be honest with you. Your mouth gets super warm really fast when there's some shit that's not supposed to be in your body. It's like a siren. I, I used to work at a steak delivery place, a food delivery. Oh, so he's a medical doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's cool. I used to be a delivery driver. <laughs> no, we will bleach the lemonade oh, and the okay, and the okay. fruit punch fountain. And oh, so okay, okay, I got you. Bleach water looks yeah. like lemonade. Gotcha. Yeah. And so okay. I pulled up a whole glass of that shit. Took a deep swig. Jesus Christ, dude! I didn't know they were cleaning the fucking. He had he didn't cover the spout the spigot. Holy shit. When you're shit. cleaning the fucking shit, you're supposed to cover Put the spigot. Put on it or something. Yeah, yeah. and my fucking Bert didn't. I came Fuck in. you, Bert. <laughs> Damn. I'll tell you what, though. The fountain lemonade is all Ooh. right. You see, you is it good or is it the fact that it's, is it like, are we buying into the, the presentation? That I, the I think it's Bert the present, yeah. Spirit? Oh, oh, you mean those it. things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. those things. That that was like, like up, up the wall. Yeah. That's yeah. what I drank out of. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I could have one of those in my house. <laughs> Those things are unbelievable. That technology fascinated me as a kid. How it just kept going. It was so cool. Yeah, there is there is an element of that to it. Uh, all right, I got a couple more here. Uh, uh, if you had to pick one, Fritos, Cheetos, or Pringles? Cheetos. Flaming Hot? Or straight up? Not a fan. Not a fan of flaming Hot. Okay, anything, so anything. straight up Cheetos is the good Straight up Cheetos would be the one. Okay. Pringle sour cream would be the number Ooh, two. Ooh, gentleman's answer. No love for Fritos. Okay. Too thick, too crunchy. Yeah. And um, there's so there's a lot of them. It's they, dense. They, yeah. It's like a fucking ass end of a pretzel or mm. something. Like <laughs> think. Just fucking, no disrespect to your Philly fucking pretzel. Sure. sure. Uh, would you walk up to a drive through without a car? I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> they will That's why not his mom bought him the car. <laughs> Huh. They will not serve you. Some will, some won't. I, yeah. I think you have to get a guy who plays ball a little bit. When you get out of the shower, you towel off. First of all, how often is that towel getting rotated? Shit, that's you're, a good you're a fresh towel every every shower? No. No. Some people okay. are, which is crazy. No. Like you live in a hotel or something. Like I'm the dry off towel, as I call it in the black community. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the other one? The 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 face towel. The you know, your rag, your wash, your washcloth. Sure. Okay. So you're a washcloth man in the wash, shower. Washcloth in the shower, yes, or a loofah, or some scrubbing, abrasive soap Some sponge. exfoliate. Gotcha. Something and like that. Use, to, sorry to cut you off, will you use uh, a, a, a body wash or a bar soap? What are you, what are you knocking around with? I prefer bar soap. Okay. And what's, what that, you bar what's that brand? The, I don't know. Some weird shit from La Satana, like some fucking... French shit. I don't even know what Lots any of that is. Give that a Google. That I can't do the expensive. grocery store soap. That should be drying you out and it'll fuck you up. Sure. So I'd be all scared of the chemicals of that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, washcloth, I probably rotate every three days. The dry off, Whoa. the dry off cloth, the dry off towel, probably every four days. Maybe. That's pretty That's good. That's real good. That's good. 
That's and really I good. I go weeks. I'm just drying yeah. off with it. It's like, okay. But the washcloth is doing a lot of work. It's picking up the dirt. Too. A lot of sure. You got to rotate that one. Now, where does the towel go when you're done drying off? Does it go over your, your door in your bedroom? Does it go over the shower no, curtain? No, why? Is, I've never understood that. I've never understood the dry off towel making it out of the bathroom. Really? Whoa. I bring my clothes into the shower. Wait, so hold on. I dry At your off, house? Yeah, I dry off in my shower. He's used to shower in truck stops and shit, though. He's got to be on I his have. toes. Yeah. Shout out to the Flying J. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's got to be on his fucking toes, baby. So, like, you dry off, then you put that towel on a towel rack in the bathroom. Then you put on your motherfucking clothes in the bathroom, and then you go back out into the world. Full clothes? Like, Not you'll put, fully, like, jeans but on? Le- no, but at least draws. Okay. The, I'm dry and at least presentable. So leaving. this towel, there's no need for this towel. But I also don't fuck with robes either, because I don't I don't make moves naked. <laughs> make moves That's naked. That's the funniest thing anyone's ever said. I don't. I make moves naked exclusively in the house. I don't understand. I just I'm not a robe uh, person. Wait, like, hold on. No, just somebody, I have this. You go in the shower. You shower. Yes. Uh, you you dry off in the shower. Do you open the door to the bathroom to get that fresh air in the really dry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It gets All too right. steamy. Okay. For you me, push yeah. you push the shower curtain back. You dry off because you're dripping. So let the drip drip in the tub. Mm-hmm. Then step out. You've done upper body. Now you lay that same towel down. Feet, ankles. Now you put that thing up on the rack. Put your drawers on. Now you're ready to leave the bathroom. Okay. But I know people who just tie the towel around their waist, and then they do all of the lotion and hair and post-shower routine in the bedroom. I've never done that. But then I've also always had to share bathroom with my mom. Mm -hmm. And then when you travel, like when I was in Mississippi with all of my cousins, you can't come out and do shit because it's a house full of motherfuckers. Mm Mm-hmm. In a hotel, when you're by sense. yourself, will you walk around the hotel room naked? No. Really? You don't no. make moves naked. Huh. Get clothes on immediately. Really? Yeah. Because you got to fight or something. <laughs> something could happen. <laughs> something could happen. In case that adjoining door opens, you got to be fucking on your it's toes. It's the same reason I don't fuck with flip-flops other than at the pool. Why? In case you get in a fight? Yeah, or you need to run. Somebody yeah. might shoot. Like, I, I have fucking trauma. Like I've been around enough weird mm-hmm. shit where, in my brain, shit could jump off. Mm-hmm. I need fucking clothes to. There's a shoe. I don't remember the brand, but there is a closed toe neoprene. It looks like one of them Kanye shoes or whatever, but it's like it's rubberized and you can wear it in the ocean. Oh, oh yeah. Like swim shoe. Swim, or whatever yeah. it's called. It goes around the. It fully encloses your foot. Yeah. I've been fantasizing about a pair of those. Get them. That's the ultimate. They were big in the 90s. Because even if they get to shooting in the ocean, I can just be out. fucking run. You should put on flippers and go the other way. Just go further out in the water. <laughs> <laughs> just get out as quick as possible, baby. Oh, man. I'm staying with getting dressed. Socks go on before your pants? Or pants, oh, then socks? That's a good question. Usually socks, then pants. Like if it's jogging pants, something with a tight cuff, an elastic cuff that's going to grip, it's easier for me to bring the pants up over the sock. Okay. So I'm not shoving sock under the elastic and all of that stuff. All right. Uh, Yeah, socks first more often than not. Okay. How do you feel about the deviled egg? Love the deviled egg. Prefer it with the relish chopped up inside it. Okay. Um, Paprika? Yes. A little bit of that that, that cube salt, whatever, those big salt. Sea salt, sea flakes. salt. Is it sea kosher salt? salt? Yeah, yeah, kosher salt. Like it's the big pieces mm-hmm. of salt. I like that on that too. You have okay. a go-to cereal. I will always have a soft spot for Fruit Loops. Okay, man, amen. This Every guy. blue moon, and it's not, like at the Daily Show, they let the interns buy the cereal, and so there's like, here's the nine you must buy, and then here's five boxes of just whatever whatever's clever yeah yeah they let they they let the kids kind of just to, to help mix it up in mm-hmm. variety and every now and then they'll grab a cinnamon toast crunch Ooh. and I'll fuck it up yeah but I don't buy cereal for the house like it just I, it okay. feels too candy like I like I, like as a 44 year old man I feel like oatmeal with walnuts is what I'm supposed to be eating <laughs> sure like that's the image I want my son to yeah. have of me you can't be digging for the prize at the bottom of frosted flakes in front of your kid yeah in front of your kid oh son we just gonna get the fruit loop follow the nose it's like no oh motherfucker your daddy eats this boring shit now stare at me <laughs> trying to stay alive 
Look at your daddy trying to live longer to fucking be with you. <laughs> who's uh, who's cutting the hair? Um, I got a barber here. Um, you go there, they come to you. For the most part, I go to his shop, but he also cuts hair at the Daily Show. So Ooh, there you go. So because he's you know because he's in the hair and makeup union, sometimes he's down at the show to cut a guest or cut somebody in the building. Mm-hmm. So I can kind of sneak. Yeah, like that was the biggest thing when Trevor left. So I lost my goddamn weekly haircut uh, why he got to cut every so week yeah because the barber will come down to cut trevor's man so i could just be like, uh, when you're done with trevor <laughs> clean me up a little bit yeah i was thinking about this the other day when you get your hair cut on set do you tip on set no there is not a penny that comes out of your pocket if you if i get my some of the best haircuts i've ever gotten were for tv productions and they are paid Crazy, well, bro. Yeah, they're they're you make a solid living. They're not burning and turning. They're not trying to get you out of the chair. To you're make making 10 bucks on way that more than you would if you do it on a regular enough basis. As a union barber on set, you can make close to what you would have been making in a shop if you had a chair and a regular flow of customers. But of course, then something like the writer strike happens at production stop. So it's like. There's a there's a gift and a curse. There's a balance, yeah. When high tide, when it's good, it's good. It's fucking great. Mm. Man, okay, it's all right. Uh, I got one more, and then I'm and then I'm clear. Okay. Uh, you go to a steakhouse. How do you get your steak cooked? Steaks are medium, ribeyes only. Cowboy preferred. Um, pretty good. Um, I know some people get a porterhouse or something. Like if I'm on a date with someone and she wants a different cut, I'll defer to her cut of meat. Gentlemen. Okay. Gentlemen's Like move. if you're getting a porterhouse for two. Yeah. And you got to share it. You'll give it to her. But I hope and pray that she wants it medium. I've dated a couple of medium rares. And it was it was difficult. Uh-huh. Um, Would you rather go higher or lower? Lower. You mean you'd rather you'd rather it medium rare? Than medium well. Oh, medium right. well can be fucked up. At and least with medium rare, I can hope and pray. That there's some sure. that you're fucked up. Yeah. yeah, and I can just get the outer perimeter. Sure, sure. You need the inner yeah. And on a date or, or with friends, are you a single appetizer guy or, or are you sharing everything? Let's share. Let's figure out something for everybody to share. But there's always one appetizer I really want. Yeah, me too, big And guy. I'll try and order two of those <laughs> uh-huh. to make sure I get my portion. Fair share. Dude, yeah, because I'm like the guy, like, like I hate fucking group nachos. <laughs> Wait, Why? Nachos is one of the most man. I get you so much. The the, right. the lack of equity across. <laughs> you know, you know. Let's talk about equity, for a <laughs> please. Diversity and inclusion. Top one percent of chips have yeah. all the good topics. And some fucker gets the chip <laughs> and doesn't have the decency to get that chip and a dry chip, and, and then balance, it, balance it and make you a nacho sandwich so you get even to so. You might get the chip with all the fucking chicken and the cheese, and then I'm stuck with a sour cream and two olive <laughs> fucking chip. Man. And they go, let's get nachos for the table. And it's like, let's just all not be happy. Yeah. There's like, a way no. they're doing them now where they, they- They span them out. They span them out. Like, they put them on cookie sheets. Mm-hmm. So everything gets an equal distribution. Is that like at a Mexican restaurant? That sounds like a Mexican restaurant. I don't restaurant. know. I saw it online, to be honest with you. Because I've seen Mexican restaurants that take the nacho- shit more serious because they of oven course. bake the cheese they, yeah. they yeah. nacho them in the oven it's mm-hmm. not that it's not like Applebee's. just yeah it's not a no. mountain it's flat yeah so every so then they go hey, yeah. all right here's guac all over the so it's like area. bruschetta or some shit yeah. yes yeah more yeah. evenly yeah. distributed yes. okay see that i would i would prefer uh, yes. okay but no give me give me something that okay i just got uh two more um mayo hellman's or miracle whip Hellman's regular mayo. Jesus. Miracle Whip is a little fucking too sweet. Now mm-hmm. you want something that blow your goddamn mind? Get that Japanese mayo. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh my I god, no uh, it's called like weepies or I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's in like a little thing. My girl gets it, but it's, it's in... halfway between Miracle Whip and American yeah, mayonnaise, and it's it is good. the perfect tang and sweet balance. Okay. And put that shit on a fucking hot dog, bro. See, put this is why I'm on the mayo. fence with him. He's classy and then trashy. What no hot dogs? You, you want the expensive hot dogs, of no. course. You but they're not. You want the expensive fancy mayo, but yes. you're putting it on a hot dog. Absolutely. Yeah, he's the duality Absolutely. of man. This I'm a, oh, I'm that's a, right. No mayo on hot dog. Fucking I, Americans. No, I'm, I'm a mayo on a hot dog hey, guy. So I, I'm in. I, I love I, it. I like what you're putting. Down. Not on a brat. You go mustard on a brat. That meat's too fucking salty to disrespect with mayo. What else okay. is going on your hot dog? Let's clear this up. 
Um, well, let's get some after this. Now, if you want, you want to know the real bougie, please. Fucking, I go bun open, preferably Hawaiian roll. Gentlemen, top cut. Don't really fuck with the side cut. Top Buns cut. Whoa. Prefer the top cut. It's because the side you open up and the hinge action the hinge comes loose, and yeah. now you got He's fucking shit coming out. It's very suspect on the side cut hot dog bun. <laughs> top cut, you know what you're getting. You crack it open. I go mayo. I go a pass of yellow mustard. I go a pass of relish. Then the dog on top of the toppings. Whoa. He's to putting encase, bottoms on. Okay. To encase and enclose the toppings underneath to keep all this bullshit slippage. And it's less messy. On top side. <laughs> Doing all this shit. It's not wrong. He turned very, toppings into bottoms. Very what just <laughs> Set a bedding of this the flavors. Nuts. Now, if you really want to go next a level. A bedding of flavors. Now, if you really want to go next level, put the hot dog in. Give it a twist. Bring some of that top sauce and residue from the bottom up to Whoa. the top layer. And now you're getting the top. Your, your palate is getting a little bit of flavor on both sides on every bite. That way when you bite the hot dog, you're not just getting toppings on one side of your mouth and meat on the other side of your mouth. You're getting even balance. <laughs> the problem is you have to you do this You should be running for office. I know. <laughs> What's going on? But, At least like, you know, commander in chief of hot dogs or something. The problem though is that more often than not when you're eating hot dogs, it's with a group of people and you know motherfuckers are watching you and judging you and how you prepare it. Like just just recently I was at a barbecue and they had the baked beans going. So sometimes I go with the baked beans on top of the dog. No yeah. sauce. You're an American. Bean, yeah. I get it. Baked beans only. Yeah. Try to do my baked bean bed and then my, like I'm going through my routine and they're like, what the fuck is that? Uh, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, Just yeah. eat that. Because I'm like no more Garcia Parra. I don't know if you ever seen videos. Like, this is a baseball player mm -hmm. that would go through. The guy from the Red Sox? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's video of it. It's a legend where Garcia Parra, after this pre pitch clock, after every pitch, he would go through the same yeah, 20 yeah, of point routine of straightening his uniform, re velcroing the glove. Mm hmm. Twisting the bat, mm -hmm. fixing it. Like he would go through all his shit and then get back in the bat. He just had neurosis. That's how I am with preparing a hot dog. <laughs> if I really want it the way I want, sure. It. So, yeah. what you should have, you've earned, you deserve. Japanese mayo is the fucking shit. Damn, the best sandwich I've ever had. The best piece of seafood I've ever had was a Burger King BK Big Fish. Oh, see, and then he does this. In this is Tokyo. Oh, I'm out. I'm done. I can't do it with this guy the anymore. The tartar sauce was based, the base of the tartar was Japanese mayo. Tartar sauce with Japanese mayo as a base over a fish sandwich that doesn't have half the chemicals that they put in the ones in America. Mm -hmm. Fast food is fresh as fuck overseas. Yeah. Damn, this guy is good. <laughs> Top three fish sandwich I've ever had. Huh. Burger King in Tokyo. <laughs> See, he's pure 50-50 down the line. I don't he know, He walks man. in both Burger King I and Tokyo. I ate for three days. I was in Tokyo, and I fucking ate Burger King See? for three days in a row. Because it was good. And like, you're in Tokyo, you're going to try Oh, fuck all that other shit. <laughs> they had, I had some octopus inside a hush puppy. That was good. What are we doing? He's perfectly 50% trash and 50% the classiest guy I've ever met in my life. You love hush puppy, right? a hush puppy. <laughs> yeah, you love a hush puppy, and then everybody loves a fucking decent piece of calamari. Octopus ain't shit, but fucking meaty fucking calamari. Sure. Yeah. Put that shit in a hush puppy. That shit was amazing. <laughs> All right, that's good. He's drinking bleach. He's, he's got Japanese mayo. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Man. Ladies and gentlemen, huh. Mr. Roy Wood. Man. What's uh, your verdict, Kip? I, I honestly, I think we only, I, I've called a 50-50 one other time, I think, but this is the most down the line, both sides of the fence, 50-50. He's the epitome of, I mean, he's doing credit card scams in like ninth grade or whatever. Yeah. And he's got Japanese mayonnaise. He's, he, that's, he's a well-cultured man. I'm saying 50-50. I got to say this. Um, I, I understand the 50-50, but his garbage tendencies are extremely methodical. Yes. So I'm going to say all class. Hmm. This is the first weird split. Toby, you want to do the tiebreaker? What are you thinking, T-Bone? First time ever? <laughs> it's it's like 60-40 class, I think. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll give, give you that. that. I'll meet you there. 60-40 like, class. I take class. food on the plane, but it's a deep dish pizza. Yeah, see, and he's like going to get the best food to take on a plane. Every, not a, every movie he makes, he then confuses me with the next movie. You think I'm going to take a fucking Charlie's Philly cheesesteak? <laughs> 
extra onions? No. <laughs> dude, I tried to Google his soap, and I had to put in my password for the Illuminati. Like, I don't know what to do to him. It's Verbena soap from La Satan. That's what it La is. La yeah. That sounds like a French restaurant. Yeah, a <laughs> French I'll do the, la, I'll yeah. do, uh, the nachos and the soap at La Satan. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Roy Wood, he yeah, is man. on tour right now. He is one of the funniest guys. You have to go and see him. This was fun. Thank oh, you, buddy. buddy. Yeah, this was great. Buddy, we love you. We've been so excited to have you. Thank you so much for coming in. Anything else you want the folks out there to know? No, Hit that's it, man. Just come out and see me live. Virginia and, uh, Beach, you said next, Yeah, right? Virginia Beach, Hartford. We, we plan from Sacramento to Hartford down to Miami, man. So Awesome. We're getting all the time zones in. If you don't see your city, know it's getting at it because it's a strike. I ain't got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Roy Wood. Thank you, buddy. Kippy, Thank what you. do you got for him? We're also all over the road. We're announcing the next leg of our tour for the fall and the winter, so get those tickets because they are moving quick. We appreciate it. We love you. Gang, we love you, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.